And this is where we are right now with uh, this uh, pandemic where we have to do this over the Zoom, which is fine. And it's great to always get a chance to talk to you, Coach, about lacrosse, especially about Ascension, Lax, Maryland, which is off and running. And um, right off the bat, congratulations on starting Ascension here in Maryland. I know it's been big up in Philadelphia with uh, John Nostrant, who's been a terrific coach up there at uh, Haverford and has now moved down here to Baltimore where he's now coaching at uh, your, your rival school at Gilman. And, uh, but you guys are joining forces with also McDonough head coach, Andy Hillgartner to uh, start this program here. And again, congratulations on that. And just your thoughts on so far Ascension and how it's uh, doing so far since you guys launched over the summer. Yeah, well, thanks, Tom, for having uh, having a few minutes with me. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned Coach Nostrand, Coach Hillgartner, and I think, um, you know, the foundation of Ascension is built on just, you know, those incredible friendships. You know, I know that the three of us, um, we compete against each other in, you know, the uh, hyper-competitive MIAA, but, um, you know, they've been dear friends for a long, long time. And, um, one of the things that we share, uh, is obviously a passion for coaching and, you know, a lot of, uh, the coaching that we do is, is, you know, preparatory in nature. It's very, um, you know, kind of getting ready to play opponents and, uh, it's obviously we're, you know, we're, we're competing to win, but the thing with Ascension is, um, is really the, the, the type of coaching we love best, which is, you know, we're not, uh, making decisions about kids playing time. We're, we're, we're really just kind of focusing on, um, helping players develop their skills. And so that was the, you know, the genesis behind Ascension, um, just giving kids the opportunity to focus on um, getting better, you know, and I, I know that there's, uh, there's um, times and places for, uh, you know, competing to win. And there was times and places where the kids need to get seen, um, you know, to get recruited, but uh, Ascension is really just about, you know, kind of getting better. And, uh, and that's kind of, you know, the, the genesis of it. And we're really, really thrilled with the reception we've had so far. Um, you know, I think uh, it resonates, uh, obviously we're, we're all parents as well. And, um, you know, we, we, we know that, um, you know, becoming the best version of yourself, not only athletically, but being around great mentors is really important. So that's, uh, we're really excited about how things have uh, started off. Just talk about you joining Ascension and with Coach Nostrand and, what led you to, to decide to do this? I know you've been uh, knees deep with the club scene, uh, helping a lot of clubs in the area, uh, but doing the Ascension has to be something new for you besides just coaching high school. Talk about this new avenue for you and what made you decide to do this. Well, you know, first of all, when, I, when, when John, you know, kind of moved down here and, and um, you know, because we're friends, we, you know, got together and we started talking a, a lot about, you um, just, you know, d doing something together and, and, you know, getting involved with Ascension and um, gives us an opportunity to interact with so many kids. And um, because we're club neutral and school neutral, you know, we don't have to only work with kids from certain clubs. And right. we wanted the ability to, um, you know, to interact with a lot of guys. And um, we just, you know, we love lacrosse and lacrosse has been great to us. And um, one of the things that we enjoy the most is helping kids get better in lacrosse. And, um, you know, uh, that's really kind of why we wanted to do Ascension. Um, it, it really didn't put us into any um, buckets where we had to only work with small segments of kids. Um, and obviously, you know, the club scene is, is great for kids. And um, we do not interfere with that. We, we work around those calendars because right. we don't want to... Um, interfere with that, with that whole world. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was the, um, you know, Don't the idea do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, again, there's just, you know, the, the kids have so many great choices. It's, it's yeah. like they have great choices for schools and they have great choices for clubs in this area. They're all really, really good. And they all serve, um, great purposes. And, um, we just wanted an opportunity to, to work with those guys. And frankly, um, you know, it, it, sometimes in the club scene, you, you don't get enough time, just like we do at the high school. Uh, we, we don't always get enough time to work on all the things that we really want to do uh, in terms of just getting better, because at some point, you know, you are trying to prepare your team. And so um, 
you know, we don't have a team that we're worried about with Ascension. We just have uh, individuals. And, we're, and so we're really trying to focus on uh, helping all those individuals. We're now into the fall here, Coach. And uh, you guys have kicked off some fall uh, training academy events with the uh, fall train to play this past Saturday. And then this past Tuesday night, you did the Freshman 44. Talk about both those uh, events and how did those clinics go for this first week for you guys? Sure. So first of all, the, the, the train and play concept that we're doing at Gilman for um, fifth grade through eighth grade, really the impetus behind that was, um, you know, that's such a crucial age um, where you're, you really need to acquire skill development. You know, um, that is the most important thing in that age group. You know, that's kind of the, you know, train to train and learn to train age group. Um, and so we, you know, one thing that I notice is that the only way you, you really kind of learn lacrosse fluency, you know, it's like, it's like an animal that grows up in the zoo or grows up in the jungle. You know, if you grow up in the zoo, it's kind of scripted, you know, and you, you can maybe do certain things well, but when you're actually out um, in the jungle, you, you kind of got to learn it all. And that's kind of the environment we wanted to create is this train and play concept. So the first part of the um, is training where we're, we're working on, technical, tactical, and team situational skills for the players. But then uh, the second part of the session is, is seven on seven, where, you know, we're kind of encouraging, you know, a, a condensed space, but uh, room within that condensed space for opportunities for guys to assess context and learn how to play without the ball and make quick decisions. You know, lacrosse is, is just a game of you know, reading and reacting. And the only way that you become fluent in decision-making is by being in environments where um, not only do you have to make quick decisions, but you're, you know, not always reprimanded if you make the wrong decision. You know, you, the only way you learn how to be a creative, fluent player is by, um, you know, being in environments that promote that. And so that's kind of the concept behind that. And then the freshman uh, 44, we just, we've had a lot of kids come to our Ascension events in the 2024 class. And we really feel like there's, that's a really, really strong group of lacrosse players. And so we wanted to give them an opportunity to experience what it's gonna be like when they show up in uh, late February or March to try out for their varsity lacrosse team. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we took uh, those guys and we're, we're putting them through. Uh, obviously we have like six or seven varsity head, lac head lacrosse coaches there. Um, and we're putting them through, you know, what would be a typical practice and what they can expect. And it's going to culminate with um, uh, like a game on the last night where we're going to play, um, you know, college rules, which is what the guys will play uh, in high school. And uh, the Freshman 44 is every Tuesday night of this month in October and also the uh, fall train to play. You can check out on Saturdays at Gilman School. At, again, the Freshman 44 is at sear lane the one in howard county not in bel-air okay. but uh just uh real quick that seven on seven concept is perfect not just for me as a content person to make videos but it's re it's really great to see how those kids think on the fly and try to move the ball and try to play lacrosse fundamentally and hone their skills and that's what stood out to me the most on saturday is watching how these kids their skill and fundamentals are getting much, much, much better at that level. What is your thoughts on the kids coming up today and how good they're playing the game at that, at that level? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, when I grew up, um, we, we, all my lacrosse that wasn't in season was completely unscripted and unstructured. Right. And really my training consisted of, you know, going over to Coach Hillgartner's backyard and playing three by three lacrosse, you know, all day. And again, I, I just, I think that is, I, I learned more from doing that um, about lacrosse fluency than, than anything else that I, that I ever did, you know? And I think, um, you know, I, one of the, the things, um, I think kids now spend so much time um, under like, um, it's hard to, like, I don't think they have opportunity as much for, for as free play as, as maybe we did um, when I was growing up. So. I think that that's really, really important. Um, and really the, the one area where I, I see um, the, the kids are so much more talented 
um, with the ball and their stick, uh, because I think they spend so much more time actually honing their craft with the ball and their stick. Um, but I don't know that they spend as much time without the ball and their stick. So I would say right. that the thing I notice is that the kids all, you know, catch and throw a lot better. They shoot the ball a lot harder and a, with a lot more accuracy. But I do think that um, the one area where kids need a lot of development is what are they doing with that uh, without the ball, which is what they're doing most of the time in a lacrosse game. So I think those are the skills that we're trying to promote. And big news for Ascension Lax Maryland this week was the announcement for the women's program. And you added some really uh, tremendous uh, coaches as directors for the women's side. Just talk about that big news right now, coach. Yeah, well, you know, again, we um, we, we couldn't have found two, two better people than uh, Mary Gagnon and Kim McNamara. Um, again, you know, they embody that kind of teacher coach mentor and and that's the, the whole concept behind ascension is we want to expose these guys uh, and girls to as many really you know good role models and people that can instruct them and help them you know um, not just as lacrosse players but as as people and um, we're really really excited about that and uh, you know Kim and Mary are, are two people that uh, you know we we just hold in such high regard and we know that they're also um beloved by uh, so so many uh, women's lacrosse players and uh we're really really excited to see um you know what their direction and their leadership brings to ascension and you can check out the women's of uh events and clinics friday nights friday night lights as you put it on the graphic here on uh uh, starts on October 23rd and goes through November 20th on Friday nights out at Cedar Lane in Columbia. Um, uh, we're here again. This is the Peace Lacrosse Blog uh, podcast, joined by Coach Gene Ubriaco from the head coach at Loyal Blakefield and also the director at Ascension Lax Maryland. And just what, where do you like to see this whole Ascension Lax of Maryland? going forward in the next year and going into the future? Yeah, I mean, right now we're just focusing on providing really good opportunities for kids in this local area to work on their craft. Um, and, you know, we're, we're going to try and, uh, again, work around their school and club's calendar. So our goal is to, um, you know, make sure that we are augmenting uh, the lacrosse experiences that they're getting with their schools and with their clubs first. So um, with that in mind, we're, we're going to be, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to try and saturate and, and do all sorts of stuff, but we are trying to find uh, great opportunities to work with as many kids as we can on the boys and girls side to just focus on getting better. Um, and uh, so we're looking to do some stuff in the winter. We have some, um, We'll be coming out with some information about our winter academy, which will be uh, indoors. Um, and then uh, we'll probably do something to get the guys red, guys and girls ready for their spring season, like a spring prep primer like we did last year. Uh, and then obviously once they get into the spring season, uh, we're all you know busy coaching and doing other things. So uh, we'll probably reconvene at some point once the uh, spring and, and summer seasons are, uh, are over. <laughs> this is a little bit a, a two-parter. Uh, how has the COVID, this whole thing has been a mess. You guys didn't have a spring season at Loyola Blakefield. And just uh, first, how did, has this pandemic affected you as a coach business-wise with Ascension and as a coach for Loyola Blakefield? And how do you see the uh, spring season playing out for 2021? Well, I think, you know, first of all, you know, again, you, you try and find the, the positives in uh in what's been, you know, a very trying time for, for everybody. Um, I would say, you know, one of the, the, the best parts of this whole experience was just, you know, having, um, having our kids at home, you know, our, uh, we have uh, one who's just graduated college and, yeah. and one who's in college. And so, um, you know, I think some of the, um, the, the good parts of having this, you know, the spring is just um, had that extra time to uh, usually in the spring. I mean, I have, you know, I, I have really no time. So having that uh, bonus time with with our family was great. That, I mean, that was probably the best part about it. I'm sure. Yeah. But, as a, but as a coach and, um, you know, if you, you know, undoubtedly the, the, the thing I enjoy the most is, is um, you know, in the spring is, is coaching lacrosse games and working with our guys. So that was really, really challenging. Um, you guys are coming and, off a great uh, year too in 19, 2019. So it had to have been deflating for you to have to not 
play the season and I'm yeah, sure. it was it was it was tough, and as you know, as as tough as it is, you know, for me, I'm not playing. I it it really was brutal for, seniors. especially the seniors. You know, they just they um we had a really not, you know, great group of guys, as as I'm sure all the schools did. But we um so I you, you feel for those guys, and then obviously they're they're graduating um, in a non traditional way, and then you know moving on to the college scene where they're you know coming into crowded rosters, and so it, it was it was tough for the 2020 guys. Um, and, you know, obviously it, it, it's a trickle down effect. So we're excited. We think that, you know, I know there's a, um, an MIA spring uh, schedule that's that's out there and, and we're hoping that we can execute that schedule. Um, but we do know that that obviously it's not going to likely not going to look like it's looked in the past. But, um, you know, you just got to you got to roll with the punches. You got to, um, you know, focus on what you can control. And uh, we're, we're excited. We have a nice group coming back. And um, we're, we're going to be optimistic. And uh, hopefully cross our fingers that something comes about with all this. I know everyone in the MIAA and also in the women's side and the public schools are all trying to figure out what to do going forward. And uh, it should be uh, interesting going forward on what they decide. Um, Coach, again, thank you for joining me today for this interview i'm really excited about working with you guys and ascension lacrosse maryland going forward and i think what you guys are doing is a great thing um final thoughts uh run through anything coming up that you like to uh put out there and shout out well first of all thank thank you tommy and and again um you do a great job and really i think you know we're, we're all aligned here we we love the sport of lacrosse lacrosse has been great to us and um you know it as well as anyone i mean man this sport gets its hooks in you and it and it builds some of the most incredible relationships and um you know we just we want to give back to the game and and you do that in your way and, and we do that in our way and um we're just excited for um lacrosse in general and uh super excited for ascension moving forward so thank you for this opportunity yeah, no problem. And make sure to check us out on peacelacrosse.com as we have some great content up from this past Saturday from the fall train and play with Ascension Lacrosse. And also we will be out at the freshman 44 game on October 27th. So make sure to follow us for that live coverage. Uh, thanks again, Coach Gene Dubriaco. Have a great day and talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it.